If you've been wondering what conventional versus climb cutting on your CNC router is in your design software, in this video, you're gonna learn exactly what that is and how it works. IDCwoodcraft.com. Hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett Frommy with IDC Woodcraft, the company you get your CNC router bits from. If you've been wondering what the difference is between conventional cutting and climb cutting in your software when you're designing your CNC project, I'm going to explain to you exactly what that is and what the differences are and when you should be using which one and the pros and cons. So we're going to cover that and later on in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the Vectric software, which is what I teach, and a couple nuances about the conventional versus climb that you need to know, where if you don't understand this, you're gonna have problems with your carves. So let's get into conventional versus climb. The main difference between conventional and climb is the direction in which the router bit is going to travel along a tool path. So there's, if you have a line, you can either travel along the line to the left, or you can travel along the line to the right. But there are different nuances when it comes to doing this, and that's why I'm going to dive deep into this so you understand exactly what's going on. We're going to get into the Vectric software, which is the software I use, but the principles that I'm going to be showing you here work in all the design software. So the first, before we get into the Vectric software, when a router bit is cutting, it is turning in a clockwise direction like that. So it's always turning that way. And let's just pretend we've got a line right here. We're gonna demonstrate this much deeper in just a little bit. But let's pretend we have a line right here. And we're, we'll just use the edge of this board. And we are cutting along the edge of the board. This router bit is turning like that. So when we are doing a conventional cut, what's going on is the router bit is going that way along the line. In other words, it's going in the opposite direction of the cut. While it's turning, it's doing like that. A climb cut is very easy to understand. The router bit is rolling like that, and it's actually going with the line like that. So this is climbing. It's like the router bit is actually climbing up the line. Now, it's that sounds basic and simple, and it is, but it's quite a bit more involved than that. So we're gonna get into Vectric software so I can show you all the differences and then I got to teach you something about the Vectric software when it comes to doing this, because without understanding this, you're going to have problems that you, things that you're just not going to understand why the software is doing what it's doing. Okay, so we are in the Vectric software. There are two tool paths. There's actually three, but we're going to work with the first two that you need to select climb or conventional. And the first tool path is profile. The second tool path is your pocketing cut. So in the software, under toolpath operations, the first two icons are profile, which is the first one, and pocketing, which is the second one. We're gonna click into the profile, and you'll see down under machine vectors, you have a selection under direction, climb or conventional. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna determine the direction at which the router bit is gonna travel relative to the line under various circumstances. This is where it's gonna get a little confusing. That's why we're gonna dive deep into this. So that's where you have the climb and conventional. And we go out of that, we'll come into pocket tool path and under offset and raster, we have the same thing. We have cut direction and there's climb and conventional. So what we're gonna do, you see in the, in the design here, I have two circles. We're gonna work with the outer circle first and then we're gonna get into both circles because there's a very distinct difference when you're starting to do two or three uh, things at one time when you're doing these type of cuts and when to determine when to use climb and conventional. So we're going to close that. We're going to go into the profile cut. And the first thing I'm going to do is just set my depth of cut to 0 0.01. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is just demonstration. I'm not going to be doing any cutting. I do want to make sure you understand what's going on. So we're actually going to be moving the machine around so you can see what's going on. So we are set, we've set our depth to 0 0.01. I'm going to be using the surfacing bit, the ultra smooth surfacing bit from IDC Woodcraft. 
uh, for visual reference. You'll understand that in a minute. It'll give you a big visual so you understand what's happening in this climb and conventional. Then we're going to select on the line and I'm going to select conventional. And finally, we are going to give that toolpath a name. We'll just call it on line conventional. And then I'll save the toolpath. And I have to select it. So we're working with the outer ring. I've got that one. I've created the toolpath. You can see that the toolpath is now created. And if I split the screens so I can see what's going on, the way I split the screens from the 2D and the 3D, if you go to the upper uh, upper right corner, you'll see 12 icons, and we're going to select the last icon, and now we can see both. And you can see that there is this um, arrow going around the line, and it's going in a certain direction. That arrow is on the line. First of all, you see this little green dot. That little green dot is where the router bit is actually going to come into the cut. So whenever you're setting up a cut in your Vectric software, that green dot is where the router bit is going to come down to start doing this cut. Now in the software, it's going to, I'm going to expand this, it's going to start right there and it's going to work its way around in one pass and then it's going to be done. Now what we're going to do is on the router, I've set up a little piece of MDF and it's 24 by 24. What I'm going to do is I'm literally going to draw on this board the two circles. And we're going to use this cool little device here. Come here and check this out. you got, you got to see this. This is uh, uh, something from uh, Shark. IDC Woodcraft carries this. This is a writing tool for your CNC router. So you can put a pen in here or or Sharpie like that. And you can actually draw with it. Now, one of the really good things that you can do with this, as you'll see in just a minute, is you can draw out all your vectors to make sure everything's turning out the way you want to before you actually do carving. A lot of people like to make puzzles, and I've seen it too often that people who are making puzzles, they carve them out and the puzzle pieces are not right for some reason, so it doesn't look good, it doesn't fit together. So here's how we're going to set this thing up. We're going to put this into the spindle, on the long mill. Now, if you don't have a spindle, you probably have a trim router, you can use that too, but a spindle is much better. I'll talk to you about the spindle here in just a little bit. But we're gonna install this onto the router, um, and then we're gonna set this up. I'll show you exactly how to set this up. I'm gonna put this in first. So we're gonna install that right there. It's very simple. Just push it up in there. It's a quarter inch shank. I'm going to... Um, Where's that flat? There it is. Doesn't require, doesn't need to be tightened real tight. Just enough to hold it. And we're going to bring these screws back. It's got two screws on here. You see right here, one there, one there. Just going to back them out. You, you can put a, a, a regular pen in here. Uh, th this comes with a couple extra screws, longer screws. Just like that. Uh, that would be for pens. So we're gonna put the Sharpie in there, and I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm simply gonna tighten that down, and I'm just making it finger tight, extra finger tight. Now the thing with this uh, shark tooth is what it's called, it's spring loaded, so there's give on it, and if the spring loading is too tight for you, it's got on the on the bottom there's a uh, there's a collar. And it's got a set screw on the collar and also on the top there's a collar the set screw on the collar so you can adjust the spring tension so i'm spinning it around and you can see the if you zoom into the point you can see that the point is rotating around which means it's not quite on center so we're just going to adjust that a little bit more loosen that up and bring that point down just a little bit more and i'm happy enough with that now, one thing I've found with this is you, if you don't want this shark tooth spinning around on you freely, then you can just put like a piece of painter's tape on it loosely just to keep it from spinning around. So, so we've got that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've got a program written. If you come over and take a look at the G-Sender, 
you can see there's the two circles. There's two circles there, and then there's hash lines through there. So that way we know exactly what we've got here. And I just need to set the zero. And what I'm going to do is simply just lower the marker down to the surface, just a point where it touches, and that's all I need. So we're just going to bring it down until I, and I'm just, I wobble the piece of paper. This is the same way you do it with a pen. You can write, write notes if you want. So we are pretty much down there. I'm not feeling resistance. I want to feel a little resistance. There we go. Now it's resistant. So I'm going to set my Z0, bring it up, and we are going to run this program real quick. And it's going to draw this out. Check this out. And there it is. So the toolpath that I used for this is what we call the quick engrave toolpath. I'll shoot another video on that one. But very cool. The, the benefit of using this, this tool, the shark tooth, come on down here, is that you can, you can uh, draw out your projects first, make sure there's no errors. You can do a little bit of design work. You can actually use it as a plotter if you want. So we're going to loosen that up. And that's it, the shark tooth. It's available at IGC Woodcraft. I'll put a link down below in the description. Now what I'm going to do is put in the ultra smooth cutting surfacing bit so I can actually do demonstration of what these, uh, the climb, how the climb and the conventional works with your design software and how it'll ultimately work in the cutting of your project. So we're just going to install this real quick. Now the ultra smooth surfacing bit, this is a, a different design from your standard braised surfacing bit tools. Uh, I had these redesigned from conventional tools where normally there's about three cutting edges. I've modified the grind on them, the bottom grind, the forward grind, and the angle of that forward grind, and added a, a fourth flute, it's four flute, and that gives you a very, very clean, smooth cut when you're surfacing your project, much better than what you might get over the um, your, your standard surfacing bits. And this is one and a half inches versus the one inch bit. You'll cut your time by, um, by a two thirds by using the one and a half inch surfacing bit over a one inch surfacing bit. All right, so now I've got this set up. I just got to zero it quickly. So this is the benefit of having a spindle is we get a lot of uh, control and for in this case I get to actually demonstrate to you this whole this whole process I'm going to turn the spindle on manual so now we've got a spindle can, can, does that show in the camera which way it's turning not quite what we're going to do is we are going to run this in multiple different ways so you understand this climb versus conventional so here's what we've got in the design software. We've got two circles. We've got this circle and we've got this circle. We're going to start with this circle. I'm going to first tell it to, to cut on the line. So what that means is the center of the router bit will be right over that line and then it's going to move in one direction or the other. One direction would be uh, conventional, the other would be climb. So here's how this will work. When, when we're doing a conventional cut, we've got this circle and we got the router bit rotating like this. Now what it's going to do, it's going to start rotating like that. That's a conventional cut. It's actually turning against the inside of the cut as opposed to the outside. Now on a climb cut, it's going to be rotating like that, but it's going to be rolling with it. There's another, the, the next tool path is outside the line which the router bit would be out here and it would be going conventional which would be turning against the cut and that's the cutting edge that Vectric sees so it's going to cut against it conventionally 
on a climb cut, it's going to roll like that, and it's going to be coming this direction. Now, here's where things get a little funny. If you are doing a, a, a conventional cut on the inside of the line, the router bit's going like this, but it's going to switch directions. It's going to, it's referring to that line, and now it's going to, going to be cutting that way. That's conventional cutting relative to this line. So this is, gets a little bizarre. This is conventional cutting on the outside of the line, like that. That's on the line, conventional cutting like that. Inside the line is conventional cutting like that. Climb cutting on the inside of the line is going to be going like that. Climb cutting on the line is going to be going like that. And let's see. There we go. And climb cutting on the outside of the line is going like that. So now we've been at this for a little while. And yes, you are still confused. I promise you, with all this re-explaining that I've been doing and what I'm about to show you, it's all going to come together as to this climbing versus conventional. So let's just keep going. Hang in there. We've almost got it. That's going to make sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to run this circle program on the line outside the line, inside the line, conventional, and you're going to see the difference. So the first tool path we're going to run is on the line conventional, and then we're going to run on the line climb so you understand the direction of the router bit turning relative to its motion around the circle. So bring the camera into here. We're going to start on that outside line. We're going to ignore the inside line for now. And we're simply going to run. So what you see now is it's on the line, the router bit is rotating this way, and, and the machine makes lots of noise. It's singing, that's the motors actually making the noise. But that's on the line, you can see the direction of the router bit. So the router bit was rotating like that as it's going around counterclockwise on the circle. Now we're going to change the program to climb on the line. So this is now on the line climb that we're going to be doing. So it's going to be here, but it's going to be coming around this way. So what Vectric is telling it to do is climb around that line just like that. This would be the rotation of your router bit. It's centered on the line. So we've, we've done two tool paths, a climb and a conventional. Now this one is going to be outside the line conventional. And what that means, it's going to come over here and the center of the router bit is going to be offset relative to the diameter of the tool. We have a one and a half inch diameter tool. So that is going to be basically three quarters of an inch. The center of the router bit will be three quarters of an inch. So the edge of the tool will follow this line. And this is going to go conventional, which means the tool is rotating like this. That means it's going to go counterclockwise along the edge of that line. So we're going to run that real quick so you can see. So you see it's following that edge. It's on the outside of the line and it's going that way. And now I'm going to load up climb outside the line. And we're going to run that. And it's going to come back over to here. And it's going to be rotating in the same direction. But this time it's going to be climbing around the outside of the circle. So we are, you can see it's on the outside of the circle. And it's, it's climbing around the circle. This is where things are going to get a little bit interesting. I'm going to tell it now to do a conventional climb inside the circle. Now, what we are thinking that this is doing, or what it was doing, was when it was on the line going conventional, it's rotating like that on the line going in that direction. When it's outside the line, it's rotating like that going in that direction. But the minute I tell it to go inside the line, now it's, it's referring this, re referencing this line 
and what it's going to do now is rotate the same rotation but it's going to come the opposite direction and the reason that is is because when we're telling vectric that we're going to be carving inside the line it is thinking that's the boundary that's going to be left over if we're doing a step we're, we're cutting into the material we're cutting into the material and it is doing a conventional cut relative to this maybe this would you we'll turn over this would be the line here and if we're outside the line conventional it's rotating like this and it's going against it but when you're inside the line conventional it's rotating like that but it still has to go against that line so you're going to see that now instead of going counterclockwise it's going to go clockwise inside the line and here we go so now it's going clockwise in a conventional cut and it's referencing this line right here. And now we're going to climb inside the line and it's going to come this way, counterclockwise. Now in this demonstration, I am using the ultra smooth cutting surfacing bit, a larger CNC router bit, uh, so that you can actually see the, the CNC router bit as it's spinning. But this climb versus conventional works for all CNC router bits. Now at the end of this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit more about when you wanna use which one, whether uh, doing climb or conventional. If you're starting to get a little concept uh, of understanding out of climbing conventional, then just take a minute and give me a thumbs up. And also, I just want to take a minute to just suggest that you get this CNC setup checklist. One of the things I see many CNC creators do, they'll break a CNC router bit or they'll ruin a project right in the middle of the carve and they don't realize that that was caused because they missed a step during the setup. As CNC creators, you and me, we like to watch the CNC router run. And that, we think that that's the whole end game, which it is. But it's so important to actually have a proper setup on your CNC router. You're going to clamp things down. You're going to put certain router bits in. You need to make sure that your router bits are set up a certain way. That's why IDC Woodcraft puts out the chucking guide. And this is something if you order from IDC Woodcraft, you will get as a first timer, you will always get this sticker as a first time order. Following proper setup is vitally important. You can see there's lots of little steps. This looks complicated, but it's just lots of little things that we do. We just do these things. And you want to make sure that everything is done. This actually covers a few more items to make sure that you've set things up properly. You're using the right router bits. They're in good shape. This is something that's free to you if you want to get. I strongly recommend you use this every time you set up a project on your CNC router because the last thing you want is to ruin a project or break a router bit right in the middle of the project. Down and below in the description of this video is a link where you can get this. It's free for you. So, and you might also want to get the IDC Woodcraft CNC Router Bit app. So the IDC Woodcraft CNC Router Bit app has all the IDC Woodcraft bits in it. And if you want to know the feeds and speeds, you select your bit and it tells you what the bit is for. And you can get the bit directly from the app instead of having to search a computer. And then all your feeds and speeds data and spec data is right in the app. This is free to you as well. It's available for Apple and Android. Go to Apple store or the google store and you can download it i'll put a link down in the description for that so let's get back to this climb versus conventional challenging to explain to you uh, but you'll get this by the time you're done so the difference was when we're on the line i, I, I explained this a couple times already because i just want you to get this it's really important when you're on the line going conventional router's always turning that way it is going to go counterclockwise when it's outside the line conventional, it's going to be spinning like that, and it's going to go counterclockwise. When it's inside conventional, it's 
going to go in the opposite direction. It's going to rotate against the line. Now, the, the reason when it's on the line, it goes in that specific direction is just because Vectric has to draw a line somewhere on this conventional versus climb. And it, it until you start getting the, like the center of the router bit, once that center of that router bit is, you've determined or told the software it's going to be inside the line any, any distance. This is a one and a half inch bit, so the inside would be, uh, the inside center axis of the, of the router bit would be three quarters of an inch inside that line, so that tool can follow the line. But if you told it to be a 0 0.01 inside the line, it's going to reverse that direction, and it's going to be cutting always against the, the direction of that line. So that's conventional versus the uh, climb is the direction of cut. We'll talk about how you want to use or when you want to use these in a little bit. And we'll get to that at the end. We're going to do something else so you understand exactly what's going on. So back to this drawing again. We're going to work with the two circles now. We've got this one and we've got this one. What we're going to do is do both these lines. We're going to select them both on a profile. And then you're going to see how this thing's going to react when we do that. So what I'm doing in the Vectric software, we're going to get back into it and I'm going to look at the 2D drawing and we're going to eliminate this noise right here. By the way, all those little lines that pop up, that is simply the software telling you the tool path and the direction that it's going. I've got the two rings here and what we're going to do is we are going to go into the tool path. We're going to pick profile and we're going to select both those lines and we'll be on the line and using the same tool path and so what it's going to do it's going to run both lines now what it's going to do is we're going to set up in conventional and then we're going to do climb conventional is going to go one way on the first circle and it's going to reverse direction on the inner circle so it's going to start in the outer circle and work its way inward to the lines inside of lines so it's going to take the outer circle it's going to start with the outer circle we're going to tell it conventional, it's, we're going to tell it on the line, and it's going to cut like that, and then it's going to shift to the inner circle, and it's going to be on the line, and it's going to go in a different direction. So this is your conventional cutting. Again, remember I said, when we're on the line, Vectric is going to simply, it, it's just, uh, it's always assuming that whatever line is on the outside is the boundary. Even if you're on the center and the cut edge, it's going to make a cut that's all the way into here it's going to assume that that's the wall that we're creating. So we're going to cut down into it like that. And it's going to go like that. And then we're just going to switch over to here. Well, when it's going to go like that, it's going to go counterclockwise. Then it'll switch the inner circle. It'll spin like that, and it'll go clockwise. Because it's always thinking that it's turning, that, that the material in the middle is what's going to be remaining on this whole project. And so that's why it's doing a... a uh, conventional cut. So the software is now going to pick start either in on this line or it's going to start on this line. Okay. So the software has decided to start on this line here, but you notice we are conventional cutting, but it's actually going clockwise because it's the reason is is because it thinks we have a solid material going through here. Okay. So conventional conventional cutting and climb cutting is kind of challenging to explain and how the software works. But I'm going to tell you how this software will work. Let's say you have a circle and a circle and a circle or some shape inside of another shape inside of another shape. We're going to draw this right here. We've got one circle and then we have two circles and then we have a third circle. And we, we are going to select all three of these and we're going to tell the software to either do a pocket or it's going to do a, um, in this case, we're going to do a profile. And we are selecting all three of these, 
when we select this one, and we're, let's say we're going to select profile outside the line. What it's going to do is it's going to come over outside the line. It's going to make its way around the line, just like that. And then it's going to come to the inside of the line. Let's see, this is going to be conventional. So I have to be very specific here. When we're outside the line, conventional, it is going that way. The router bit is turning that way. It's going to come to the next line, and we are still selected outside the line, but it's going to come inside the second line. The router bit will be turning that way, and it's going to travel that way. So it's turning against the line. For the third line, it's going to come to the edge of the line like that. The router bit is rotating like that, and it's going to start cutting in that direction. Again, it's going on a conventional cut all the way around the line. If we did climb cut, then it's going to rotate that way and the directions will change for each one. All right, so we've been going at this for just a little bit now and I know that you're still really confused about this climb versus conventional. It's a bit challenging to explain this, but I promise you that by the time you're done, you will get this. So let's just keep going. So the question now becomes, when do you use climb and when do you use conventional? So we're going to discuss that with uh, just a piece of wood right here. And, and before we do that, just remember the shark tooth drawing tool uh, from IDC Woodcraft. Can, you can use this to draw out all your lines first so you can see exactly what your CNC router is going to do when it carves out a project. Because the last thing we want is to make something like a puzzle and the pieces don't fit because they cut wrong. You can draw out on a piece of paper, cut things out. You can draw it on the board, just like I did here, whatever. Okay, so remember, climb versus conventional goes uh, works for all CNC router bits. Conventional, it's always going to go against the cut, just like that. Climb will always try to climb with the cut. So it's like a car rolling along a road, and as Liberty put it, the conventional is like a shovel digging out as it's moving forward. Okay, so let's talk about when to use which. Now, the first thing to remember on a climb cut is as the router bit is making its climb, okay, it's rolling with the cut. And you can visualize that if it's cutting into the material like this deep and it's rolling like that, it's going to want to roll out of the material. So the forces of the bit are actually pushing it that way. And if your router is not strong or you're overfeeding, then what's going to happen is it literally is going to pull itself out. You can bend your router bit. You can pull the machine out of step, which means it's going to lose its position and it can actually force itself out. So a climb, you want to be careful. You don't want to put a lot of force with climb. So that's what climb does. Conventional it's going to be rotating this way. It's going to be moving this way. And the material the, and, and the router bit is going to want to dig into the material that way. It's literally trying to pull itself into the cut. There's going to be a lot of resistance because there's going to be a lot of material there that's trying to pull away. But there will be certain amounts of deflection. All CNC router bits have deflection. If it's going in a climb cut like that, it's rolling forward, the deflection is going to be like that. And what deflection means is it's going to be just a little bit of bend in the router bit. All router bits have deflection, so there'll be a little bit of pressure going that way, and whatever uh, your router can actually allow, it's going to deflect that way as well. Your deflection on a conventional cut is going to def is, it's rolling against the cut. It's going to deflect inward. So it's going to dig in. So you want to actually be aware that if you want an exact profile around your, around your piece, that when you're doing a conventional and you're following that line and you're hogging out a lot of material, it's actually going to hog just inside that line. So you want to uh, just cut a little bit outside the line at first when you're doing a conventional and then You'll do your last cut right on the line, and you should be good because there's very little material to remove. The, the thing with uh, wood is you have grain, 
And so the grain causes changes in the forces on the router bit as it's moving around the grain. And depending on the nature, the nature of the wood, some wood is fuzzy, some cuts really clean. You may have fuzzies uh, along the cut. But at the end of the day, when you are cutting wood and you're getting your finished cut, you always want to be going conventional. Conventional is just doing a good cleanup on the wood and like as in manual tools, you're always uh, like a manual hand router, you're always turning against the router. Uh, if you're turning with the router, it can actually try to pull it. And it's the same thing going on, but wood cuts better when you are cutting in a conventional cut. So if this was a ring that we were cutting right here and we want to get a good finish all the way around this ring, even if it was a regular piece of wood like this piece of oak, we want to be in a conventional cut going like that. And so it's going to cut that way, and on the, on the inside, it's going to cut that way. And that is going to leave the best finish that you can get. One of the things that you want to do on this, when if you're really concerned about finish, you can slow down the feed rate and the speed a little bit, and that will help give you a good finish as well. So that's climb versus conventional, as best as I can explain it. Very challenging to explain, but I think you get the idea now. Uh, also, make sure you get this checklist and use it every single time you run a CNC project because nobody wants to ruin a project or break router bits. And it almost always happens because you missed a step in the setup. It's like pilots using checklists to make sure your airplane lands and uh, lands safely where you want it to go. We're making sure our project gets done right and the way we want it every time. So that linked, that's linked down below. And of course, the app for the IDC Woodcraft um, the router bits that's free to you saves you from getting the information off the computer it's all right there on your phone speeds feeds and you can get your router bits comment down below if this video was helpful uh, or if I missed something like the video if it was helpful and subscribe to this channel I got lots of videos on CNC routing and have a great day better tomorrow and happy CNC idcwoodcraft.com